For some time now, I've wanted to experiment with these inexpensive RF modules. And a good experiment will be to see if we can send data from a temperature sensor over them repeatedly and reliably. And for our temperature sensor, let's use the 18B20 one-wire device. We can find these devices on sites like Banggood, and we can buy them very inexpensively for about a dollar each. Okay, let's begin. Here's the transmitter on the left and the receiver on the right. And as you can see, they're very simple devices with just a data pin, power, and ground. And that's all there is to them. Here's the spec for the transmitter and receiver. This is a slightly older model than the one I'm using. And as you can see, they operate at 315 megahertz, same as your garage door. And they use amplitude shift keying ASK. And we can see that we can use a voltage of between 3 and 12 volts for the transmitter. While we're at it, let's take a look at the spec for the temperature sensor. This is a one-wire device. Again, it has a very simple pinout. We can power it with 5 volts. It has a wide temperature range and an accuracy of plus or minus half a degree. Okay, let's take a look at the transmitter schematic. I've done this in Easy EDA. And I'm showing the diagram here as it will be when I finally build it. So all of this part here is really uh, what we're using as our Arduino Uno at the moment. And in the final build, we'll need a header for programming. So that's what this stuff is for here. And we need a crystal and a couple of capacitors to keep the Atmega 328P going. Over here, we have our temperature sensor. And notice that we have a 4.7K pull-up resistor on the data line and down here we have our 315 meg RF module this is our transmit module and we have this potentiometer here and this is for calibrating the battery voltage so basically we're going to feed in a sample of our power or battery voltage into this ADC pin and we need to use this potentiometer to set the voltage right here to 1.1 volts and that's because we're going to set our reference to 1.1 volts and so it'll mean that as far as the microcontroller is concerned 1.1 volts means that we're at full power. So here we're going to build this on breadboard. We need the transmitter, the temperature sensor, some resistors, some potentiometer, a breadboard, the Arduino Uno and of course some jumper wires. Right, let's quickly put together the transmitter on the breadboard. It's amazing how fast I can work when I want to. Right, here's the transmitter on the breadboard. We have the temperature sensor and the potentiometer for adjusting the battery voltage measurement and of course the Arduino Uno. And you'll notice I've attached a piece of antenna wire to the transmitter module. Let's take a look at the code for the transmitter. The code is fairly well commented here, so I won't go through everything, but there are a few key things that I'd like to point out. Notice up here that we're using the Radiohead ASK library and the libraries for the temperature sensor. So these are required. You need to put those into your Arduino library. Here we're structuring the data in, in one package in memory, and this is required for the format that the Radiohead uses to transmit the data. Further down here, you'll see that we're printing out some values to the serial monitor. So we're getting the battery volts on analog A0, and we're printing that out. And we're also getting temperature in Fahrenheit and degree centigrade from the sensor. We don't have to calculate between them. The sensor will give us either one that we request. And then we send it. So let's turn on the serial monitor and just confirm that our sensor is actually sending out data. Here it is. I'll turn it on here. And we can see that we are reading 5 volts for the battery voltage, which is what it should be, and that we have sensible readings for 
the temperature in Fahrenheit and centigrade, so we're confirming that our temperature sensor is working and sending data. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Let's take a look at our receiver schematics. Over here we have a very similar setup with the microprocessor. And down here we have our RF receive module. It's receiving data from pin 4 of the microcontroller. Over here we have our LCD display. Notice that we have this resistor here on the LED cathode, so this is for the backlight of the LCD display. This potentiometer here adjusts the LCD contrast. We have some power indication here. And notice that we only have four lines connected for the LCD data. So in the software there's a way that we can make this work in the coding so that there's only four wires instead of eight and it just saves on the wiring. So that's what that's about. Okay, so that's our receiver. So here's the receiver. I've already built it. Here's the pot for the LCD contrast and the LCD itself. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So now let's take a look at the code for our receiver. Again, we're including the Radiohead library, library for the liquid crystal display. And here we're setting up the Radiohead parameters to kilobits per second. And we're setting our receive pin to pin 4 and our transmit pin to pin 12. Of course, we're not using the transmit pin here, but we need to format it this way. And so this is how you change from the default pin, I believe, for receive for the radio head. It's pin 11 or something like that. Further down here, again, we're um, using this parameter. Display time is equal to millis plus 60,000. 60,000 is one minute. minute. So we're using this parameter to display our battery voltage only once every minute. So I just wanted to display it occasionally. And again, uh, we, we receive the data here and then we print it out to the serial monitor. And we have some code for our LCD to make the display nice on the LCD also. So let's take a quick look at the serial monitor to see if we are receiving data. So we'll turn it on here. And here we go. So we are receiving data over the radio link. And you can see we have a battery voltage of 5 volts, which is what it should be. And sensible values for our temperature also. So that's working. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention is that having these serial print statements in here will um, affect the speed that this works at. So when you're actually using it, you might want to comment this out with a couple of sl uh, slashes uh, for every, every one of the serial print statements. And if you're finding this not working very well when you do that, try putting in some small delay in its place. Um, there may be some delay required. Okay, so that's it for the receiver code. And just like that, we have it working. So here it is, we're displaying our temperature and there we managed to catch it just as it was displaying the battery voltage also. So I'll just pan over here and show you the transmitter part of it as well. There you go, and you can see the little black wire that's the antenna for the transmitter also. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe on YouTube and Instructables, and I'll leave all the information that you require, the code, the circuit diagrams, and everything else on the Instructables in the link below. And if you don't see it, click on the show more button. Okay, bye for now, guys. See you next time.